Okay, free motion embroidering on a Singer 1949 201k treadle. Um, and this is how I do it. So I've got my hoop underneath. Um, I've got my fabric nice and tight. I use a medium stabilizer, tear away stabilizer. Threaded it all up. Um, the bobbin thread is underneath. So I need to pull that bobbin thread up first. So that's going to be my first focus. So drop the needle down. I do this by hand to start off with. Grab that cool little bobbin thread underneath there. I always use a white bobbin thread unless I'm um, wanting a different effect. Because um, you can buy really good bobbin thread um, and it makes your top thread go further. Just being a bit of a Scots person there. Now, most important part is make sure you drop your pressure foot. You can buy darning foots, you can buy embroidery foots for what we call low shank. This is a low shank um, sewing machine, being a vintage. Um, I um, have used them, didn't really find any difference. I, I prefer to have a clear visual of here. I can see where my needle is going and what's going on. And, and I'm confident to do it without foot. So it's just a personal preference thing. So you don't, you know, if, if, you're, if you're not good with your hands and you like to get your hand deep down there, you might want a foot. But in my case, um, I've only had one needle strike at the end of a needle, of end of my nail, so I kind of count myself lucky. So hopefully today it won't happen again. You just never know, I guess. So what I do is do a couple of locking stitches, very small, minute. And then once I've got that locked in, I then do my nice long stitches. Now, this is a... Uh, what they call a printed fabric book that you know for quilting that you can make out for children I'm doing free motion embroidery on it because I like to have a little bit of touch and feel and it just makes the book a little bit more interesting and it's more fun for the children to read and so I'm even though I'm doing free motion embroidery it is kind of like uh, thread painting because I'll be using and mixing and matching some threads to make the colors go into there. So all it is is just learning to know when you've completed that stitch, where you can move the fabric to and create that locked stitch. Now, once I've finished the area that I want to paint in, lift up my foot, pull out some um, top thread, and then I'll move the fabric down to where my next um, area I want to paint in or uh, embroider in. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I've pulled out the thread so it's given me some space. I'm not going to cut the um, under thread because I don't need to because it's moved to where I want to go. Do a couple of little lock stitches and continue painting. And if I'm clever enough, I would have locked in the top stitch. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. So that's all I want in that area. Now I want some more in this area. So again, I'll just slowly do a couple of small stitches into that area and then away I go again. The more you move, the bigger your sweep is with your hoop, the bigger your stitch will be. Now that's great if that's the effect you're looking for, but I like to do a bit of a combination of both. So, um, and it is really crucial that you've got a good flow of thread going through your embroidery machine at an even pace. And that's why you take off a little bit of the top tension, but you still need to apply tension when you are sewing, because you want to lock that stitch. It's incredibly meditative. I'm just going to go in here and do a little bit of shading so that when I come in with the lighter color, Will look pretty cool and that is all there is to it so i'm going to go down to here come back into here needle up pull out some top thread because what i want to do is the gray shading in there press your foot back down a couple of little lock stitches and away i go again This is such a versatile thing. You can do this on quilts, you can do it on these books, you can do it on 
You know, you can even just um, do stylized letters and things with free motion embroidery. Um, you can get zigzag foots that will fit on a low shank um, vintage sewing machine. Or I mean, you've got your modern machines will do this as well. I prefer treadle. Um, I have got a big industrial um, zigzagger that I can do this on. It's another vintage. Um, and, and she's, you know, stunning machine. Um, but at the moment, I'm just in the mood for vintage um, domestic. So I'm working away on this lovely 1949 201K Singer. Just lock, drop the pressure foot, lock that in. Just pull those threads out of the way. Boop, 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 boop. Just get some colour going on in here. I'm not going to do a thick block in here because as you can see it's only mottled so I only want some of the grey showing through because I'm going to come through with some of that lighter grey in my next sweep. So there we go. That's how I do free motion embroidery on my vintage treadle machine. Hope it's been of help and enjoy. Oh, I tie down all the threads sew them all in into the back once I finish so that you get this completed look here. So enjoy.